Welcome to Success Business and Leadership Service. Uh, today we're going to part two of our amazing series on the power of leverage. Last week we laid the foundation, uh, but because we need to try and finish up, we're just going to go into part two this morning. We stopped last week looking at the 10 kinds of leverage. 10 kinds of leverage. And we examine number one. Number one is other people's knowledge, which is where we stopped last week. Other people's knowledge. And we're able to establish that in order for you to leverage or take advantage, you need to understand that there are 10 different areas of leverage or advantage that you can explore in the journey of your success in life. And we said number one is what other people's knowledge. There are things that people already know. And by virtue of what they already know, you can just become a beneficiary of their knowledge. So we look at people like medical doctors and lawyers. You don't need to spend 20 years, 25 years going to study to become a medical doctor in order for you to benefit from the knowledge of a medical doctor. You don't need to be a lawyer to benefit from the knowledge of a lawyer. And that's what leverage is all about. So today we continue from number two, other people's experience. Other people's experience. You have heard it said that experience is the best teacher. However, the real truth is the fact that the experience of others are the best teacher. When you wait to learn from your own experience, then you will have failed. So when we say experience is the best teacher, we need to complete it by saying the experience of others are the best teachers. The Bible even records that there are many things that are written in the word of God for our own examples so that we can learn from the experience of other people. The Bible also says that we should Follow those who through faith and patience in early the promise. So when we see the experiences of others, the experiences of others becomes a motivation and a leverage for us in our own journey. Uh, for instance, someone has gone through a phase in life and they have written a book. When you read the book of that individual or that author, what are you doing? You are taking advantage and leveraging on their own experience. Someone has understood a particular aspect of life and then that person organizes a training or organizes a seminar. What do you do? When you attend such training and you attend such seminars, you are able to learn the secret of the trade. You are able to learn what helped that individual to be what he or she is and then that becomes a leverage for you. When you submit to the mentorship of people, when you submit to the mentorship of people, what are you doing? You are taking advantage of their experience. You are leveraging on their experience so that you will not repeat the mistakes that they have made. They can guide you with their success story. They can guide you with their mistakes. They can guide you with all that they have learned in the journey of their own life. Number three. Because we have a long way to go today. I want to try and... Number three is other people's idea. Other people's idea. If you sit down to think well, you will realize that many of the things you use today, many of the things you take advantage of today, many of the things that give you comfort in life today are the ideas of other people. Someone created the chair that you are sitting on right now. Someone invented the air condition that is making the atmosphere cool for you to enjoy. Someone invented the microphone that they are using to hear me amplify my voice to you. Someone invented the wristwatch that you are using. Someone invented the mobile phone. So you find out that all the different things that you use in life, all the different things that makes life comfortable for you are things that other people created. So it is somebody else's idea that you are now benefiting from. If you say, I don't want to use anybody's idea, I only want to use my idea, then you go back to the Stone Age. You go back to the Stone Age. 
because that means you have to be naked because the clothes you are wearing, somebody else manufactured clothes. Hello? That means you have to go without shoe. Somebody manufactured shoe. That means you have to start trekking because somebody manufactured vehicles. So you find out that when we talk about leverage, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to go through what other people have already gone through. You don't need to do what other people have already done. There was a time when we used to post letters. In order for you to communicate with someone in another part of the world, what do you do? You write a letter, you go to post office, you buy a postal stamp, and then you send the letter, and it takes weeks for the letter to get to them. It takes weeks for them to reply you. So you have to wait for months for that back and forth communication to take place. But what happens after that, somebody invented the fax machine. And then you're able to send the fax, and then you're able to receive the message. But now, you can be communicating by WhatsApp, instant messaging with someone in China, in Australia, and you are sending the message and they are replying you instantly. Why? Somebody else's idea. So you find that when we talk about leverage, you don't necessarily have to be the inventor of the idea. Today, many of us are on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. I had an Instagram session yesterday night and people connected from all over the world. Somebody connected from Saudi Arabia. And we're all online together. But I'm in Lagos. And the person is in Saudi Arabia. Why was the person able to connect Instagram? Why? Somebody else's idea. So you find out that when we talk about leverage, there are different ideas that exist in our world today that people have been able to act upon that makes life easy for you. When Jesus was alive, there was no microphone. So Jesus had to rely on the wind to carry his voice in order for the people to hear the voice. But I don't need to rely on the wind. I have a microphone. Why? Somebody invented that microphone so that I'll be able to do that. Number four, other people's success. Other people's success. There are different people in the world today that have entered into a place of success as a result of the grace of God and as a result of the application of life principles and success principles. Now, when other people become successful, you can take advantage of their own success as a leverage for your own journey in life. See, how do I do that? You're already doing that on many levels. Many of you are marketers today. You market people's products. Is it your product? <laughs> you market people's service. Is it your service? No. Someone has become successful in coming up with a product, coming up with a service, and then you are now marketing their product, marketing their service. You are into network marketing. You are not the owner of the product. You are a marketer. And then you are making money as a result of somebody else's success. There are a lot of people today that wear different brands that does not belong to them. Some even sell it. There are people that sell jerseys, Arsenal, Man U, Liverpool. I, you have not even gone to London before. You have not even traveled out of Nigeria. But because somebody else has become successful, you now carry their name. You print a t-shirt. You carry their name. You print souvenirs. And you are selling souvenirs with somebody else's name, somebody else's logo. Why? Because they have become successful. So you are leveraging on their success. When you associate with successful people, consciously or unconsciously, that association affects you. Why do we have celebrity ambassadors? Why do we have brand ambassadors? So that the success of that celebrity can rub off on you. And people can say, okay, if this celebrity is an ambassador for this product, all of us that believe in this celebrity, we have to also patronize this product. So you are leveraging on somebody else's success. And many times, when we don't even understand the power of that association, it becomes a trouble. So how do you leverage on the success of people? By association. When you associate with successful people, whether you like it or not, consciously or unconsciously, it will begin to affect you. Because the Bible says, they that walk with the wise shall be wise. It's there in your Bible. So when you walk with successful people, whether you like it or not, over a period of time, 
Consciously and unconsciously, they will begin to influence your thoughts. They begin to influence your mindset. They begin to influence your behavior. They begin to influence your habits. They begin to influence different aspects of your life without you even knowing that you have been influenced. Now, time plus time equals to influence. That's the mathematics of influence. Time plus time equals to influence. Say, so, sir, what are you talking about? Time plus time. Where you continue to spend time will influence you. Who you continue to spend time with will influence you. What you continue to spend time on will influence you. Time plus time equals to influence. So whether you believe it or not, whether you're conscious of it or not, if you continue to spend time with someone in something, in a place, it will influence you. So you want to become successful? Move with successful people. A young lawyer was part of a legal association and in one of their meetings and conventions, he stood up and complained on how that a lot of the big, big lawyers were not helping the young, young lawyers to succeed and all the cases were going to the big, big lawyers and all the small, small lawyers were left to struggle on their own. And when he complained, one of the elderly lawyers that was experienced, that was doing well, said, okay, who is your mentor? You are complaining, who is your mentor? In this, you went to school, yes. You have a degree, yes. But who can you point to in this industry that is your mentor that you follow? He said, hey, all this mentor, before you, it's difficult to get them. You want to get there. They don't have time for you. Da, 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 da. It's okay, no problem. Take my card. Come to my office next week. So the young lawyer goes to the office of this elderly lawyer. And then the man says, oh, how are you doing? Let's go for lunch. So they get outside. The guy says, no, let's check. There's a restaurant down there. Let's go. So they walk down very far to go to a restaurant. And they were discussing on the way. So they went to the restaurant, they had lunch, and they came back and they said, bye bye, come back next week. The guy was thinking he would give him case, or he would give him some referral, or he would give him some brief, or he would connect him to some. The next week, they came again, lunch. As at the third week, lunch again, the guy was already complaining. He said, Can you imagine? He said, I should come home. All he's taking me is to go and eat. He said, Food, that is my problem. He did not understand the power of association. But by the fourth and fifth week of that association, he started getting phone calls. He started getting briefs. And he was wondering, how come people are now beginning to give me briefs? What he did not realize is that by associating with that man, by that man showcasing him as someone is associating with, that man has allowed his own success and his influence to rub on him. And people are saying, if he can move with this man, he knows something. If this man can associate with him, he knows something. Hello? By the grace of God, I mentor a lot of people. By the grace of God, I'm a board of director, board of advisors, chairman, to different board of different companies. And sometimes when I get some of those letters, I'm wondering, why are these people... I don't even know you say, we just want you to be on the board. And they will pay just to have your name so that when they have the name, Olumide Mane, as they say, ah, if Olumide Mane is with these people, ah. <laughs> I have one of my sons, they are also into real estate. Every year they will just come, hey, you need to come. You need to come. I say, what? He say, ah, sir, you don't understand. That every time you show up, money shows up. He said, the last meeting we did, the woman brought 10 million. See, I just wanted to come and see whether this man will come for this program. That for him to come for this program and associate with you people, it means that you people are joining because this man has been following him for 20 something years. He's a man of integrity. So if he can associate with you people, it means you people are joining. And she invested 10 million in their company. So you need to understand that other people's success can be what? Can become a leverage for you. Number five, other people's failure. Other people's failure. When those that have gone ahead of you have made mistakes, learn from their mistake. That's an advantage. You don't have to repeat the mistake of your father. 
You don't have to repeat the mistake of your mother. Your father was a teacher. Your mother was a nurse, civil servant. Yet they gave birth to eight children. How do you use teaching salary and nursing salary to take care of eight children? And many of you, your parents have to struggle to even allow six out of eight of you to finish secondary school. And your life could not move in the direction it could have if they had only two children. If you don't learn from that, now you are married, you are looking for a boy. You already have three girls. Before you know it, you want to do one more. Then twins will come. It become five girls. Learning from the mistake and the failures of others. Learning from the mistake. You know what not to do. What not to do. You learn what not to do. You learn what to avoid. As a young man, when I finished from school, I'd already become a minister. I joined the church, and I was in the church for about four years. And that was a very, very amazing stage of my life. And because of the experiences that I had in that church, when I started Calvary Bible Church, early in the first two, three years of this church, any time I refer to that church, I refer to it as a wasted season of my life. That that church, I just went to waste my time there. That church, that church, that church, that church, that church, that church. And the one day I was saying it on the pulpit, 23, 24 years ago or thereabout. And God rebuked me and said, stop that. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. He said, I sent you there to teach you how not to run ministry. So, so that was your Bible school. That was your training school. He said, the wisdom you have now, the things, you, the integrity, the order, the structure, making sure that you separate your money from church money, everything is documented. It's because you saw how a pastor was stealing money and you told yourself, I will not steal like this man. He said, so I use this failure to teach you how to succeed. And since that time, have you ever heard me say anything about my former church? You won't hear me say anything about Why? Because I realized that was my training school. So other people's failure... It's a leverage. It's a leverage. Don't repeat the mistake of other people. Don't mock their mistake, but learn from their mistake. Don't laugh at their mistake, but learn from their mistake. And that's very, very important. So when you watch other people's life, you know what not to do. You know what to avoid. You know what not to do. You know what to avoid. Let me give you a very powerful aspect of leveraging on other people's failure. Listen to this because this is where religion messes up a lot of people. Now listen. When people fail, there is a gap that needs to be filled. If you are wise, part of leveraging on people's failure is to fill in the gap. Take advantage of the vacuum that has been created. You know why? You didn't create the problem in their life. So benefiting from the vacuum does not make you a bad person. But people don't understand that. So, God forbid, you are a pastor, you are in an area, and another pastor in that area falls into adultery. Are you the one that pushes him into adultery? And then people begin to leave his church. When they leave his church, where should they go to? Position yourself to get the members. You have not committed any crime because their soul needs to be saved. Oh, you are not getting it. <laughs> Hello? A company is in trouble. And they now say, okay, oh, because of this problem, that company is going to be shut down and sanctioned, and they are going to investigate them. When they are investigating them, what happens to their customer? Customer needs another market. Plug in. Take advantage. Hello? That is leverage. Now, it doesn't mean you are a bad person. Hello? Now, let me ask. Somebody is sick. You are not the one that afflicted them with sickness. They have kidney problem. And by virtue of the kidney problem, they now want to go to India or China or wherever they go. And the person now wants to sell a seven million naira car for two million. You know, go buy it. So think of it. Because many times we think we are so spiritual. We have 
very spiritual. That was the problem of Moses. God said, let's kill these people and start afresh. Moses said, no, how can we kill these people? No, we can't kill them. They ended up killing him. <laughs> let's move on. Number six, other people's credibility. Other people's credibility. That still speaks about association. I was speaking with um, a group of ministers years ago. And I said something that they did not agree with until six years later. What had happened is there's a minister that is not really, there are many things that are wrong with the minister. But he's a very wise man. And by wisdom, what does he do? All the very, very important people, all the credible people in the body of Christ, he will do everything he can to invite them to his church. He will spend money. In those days, he will do a whole night vigil. Bring all manner of musicians that are reigning. Bring all the men of God. One night, oh, he can have ten musicians and three heavy men of God. One night. And he will give all of them plenty of money. But me, I know that this guy is into drugs. I know. He's a fake man of God. But his ministry continued to grow. Because all the men of God, when they come, he will do poster. In those days of poster, the whole of Lagos will be at God with poster. Crowd will gather. And people will say, ah, I say, forget it. I'm not going to that church. I will not be on a poster in that guy's church. Forget it. Ah, okay, why? Hey, once so I say, I'm not going. That guy is fake. He's using all these people to cover himself. One day, I met one of the fathers. And we're on the same flight, and we're discussing. And discussion went, I say, but sir, do you know this guy? Hey, I don't know him, but you know, he invited me. He's a very, very humble man, oh. He knows how to honor men of God. I say, sir, what's your definition of honor? Love offering. I say, be careful. This guy, by the time the thing will come out, all of you will be robbed, you know. By the time the case came out, when they caught him in America, both himself and eight choir members on drugs, they caught them in Houston. By the time the case came out, all the men of God that were being used, all of them started burying their head in shame. So, there are people that, as I'm a pastor now, I have people that say, my father and the Lord, my father and the Lord, and I know that they are not my sons. So I tell them straight, oh, I'm not your father, I don't know you. Daddy, 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 mommy, 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 just to use your name, they just throw your name around. Hello? So be very, very careful, because other people's credibility is a leverage, but you also have credibility, be careful that people are not using your name. Yesterday, while we were on Instagram live, Somebody sent me, somebody um, typed out a message. Sir, are you the one in charge of coin, clinical coin, something, something, investment? Coin one or something one? So I said, sorry, we don't do that. He said, but somebody is using your name and your picture on Facebook, uh, on WhatsApp for people to come and invest. And I already invested. I said, sorry. You know our... No, see, but the person has invested. People, you didn't buy land. You are investing in one coin, double coin. It's amazing. There are what we call time-tested investment. Real estate, time-tested. You know they fail. Fixed deposits. Treasury bill. Things that are there that everybody will see. You know they did that one. Now all those latest one. Get 30% in one year. Get 20% in one month. Now those 419 kind of one. Now you go go. Land you have not bought. You are 35 years. 35 years or now you don't have one plot. Yet you have done 30 of those investments. Because greed and covetousness is worrying you. Hello? Greed and covetousness is worrying you. It says Forex. We just came back from Asaba yesterday. And the latest thing in that side, there is one forest thing they were doing. They said the guy was giving them 30% per month. And the guy erected almost 40-something billion. I said, ah, did you say four? 
He said 40 something billion in the East. He said, very, they said, you didn't see the billboard where you were coming. The thing broke just this February. So people are crying. So when they came for our own meeting, they were coming thinking, this man too has brought another one to see what to join again. I said, I know they learned. Wonder Bank has been there since the 70s. They come in different uniform. Hello? So other people's credibility, maximize the power of positive association. When you join an association, you can now leverage on the credibility of the fact that you are a member. So if you are a lawyer and you are a part of the Nigerian Bar Association, you ride on that credibility. You are an accountant. You are a member of ICANN. Now, what that association does is that it gives you credibility. That this person is a lawyer and is in bar association. This person is a lawyer, is a member of ICANN. ICANN is a well-structured, well-organized association that ensures compliance, ensures that people... So when you are in a profession, join the association that are credible, that will give you leverage. You cannot be a surveyor and we can't trace you. You are a lawyer. You are not part of MBA. You are just one lawyer by yourself. You went to school where your father and your mother is a lecturer. And you graduated by yourself. Hello? Then when we talk about credibility, who you know also determines a lot about life. And that's why as you begin to grow in life, be careful of where you allow your name to be put. Be careful of what you put your name on. Be careful. Sometime late last year after the COVID, I got an email from a guy that wanted me to forward this book from one of the states in Nigeria. So he wanted me to do it forward, that I am his father. And I've never heard of his name before. He has been following me for like 12 years. And I'm his father. How can I be your father for 12 years and I don't know your name? He said that I'm an irresponsible father or you're a bastard child. And me, I know I'm not an irresponsible father. So I replied to him. I said, well, I've seen what you have said, but I don't know you. See, ah, I have your book. I, I, I said, okay, in eight years, you are not in America. Oh. Eight years. You are in Benin. I have been to Benin at least twice a year for the past 11 years. You have never come to any of the programs in Benin, even if you can't travel to Lagos. I say, even this year, 2020, I was still in Benin in February before COVID. You did not come. I say, I've been doing meetings in Lagos. I even came to Benin to do ministers conference like three, four times the last five years. Were you not? So if you are really my son, are you not supposed to be in the network? Have you ever been to our church in Lagos to be in a conference? Who are you fooling? I say, if you want to be a son, you can start the journey now. Order your 12 year story. Fa, 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 fa. Stays by moonlight. Number seven, other people's platform. Other people's platform is another leverage that you can use. Other people's platform. Riding on other people's platform gives you a leverage. You know the amazing thing? There are people that do not understand the power of a platform. So they abuse platform and they take platforms for granted. You don't want to know what it is to be gifted and grace without a platform. I'm telling you, just one reality show platform can turn you to a millionaire in 90 days. And you are not the most gifted though. There are people more gifted than you that don't have that platform. Today, there are many people all over the world, all over the country, that many of us celebrate. But the only reason why we know about them is because there is a platform we saw them on. You saw them on TV, you heard them on radio, you saw them on somebody else's platform that you believe in, and then you now know them. That platform that was given to them was a leverage. So as a pastor, as a minister, I know. I went to speak in a church last year, and they invited me back 
for later in the year. COVID did not allow it, and then we went back this year. When I got there, I looked at it, I said, this is my second time of coming to this church. I said, this is one of the exalted altars of this nation. I said, the first time I came last year, it was a privilege to be here. I said, but for you to invite me back, it's now an honor. So the first time you brought me, it's a privilege. For you to say, this man qualifies to come back again, it's now an honor. So I feel honored that you give me the opportunity to return again. Hello? There are people that are so gifted. Lifeline choir, are they not gifted? Some of the people in Lifeline choir, they can become a global vessel just by one platform. One platform. Hello? But now, how did you know they are gifted? Because we gave them this platform. Many of you are sitting down here right now. You can sing more than some of those people. But you are not in choir. So we can't give you microphone. We can't give you platform. But because they are in choir now, we show up on Sunday. Whosoever they give microphone to all of us will listen. It's a platform. It's a platform. And from there, anything can happen. Someone has a radio program. Someone has a TV program. They are followers. You can take advantage of their platform. Pay them for 10 minutes. Pay them for 15 minutes on their TV program, on their radio program, so that you go there, they interview you. If they have 3 million viewers and they interview you for 15 minutes, you are paying them for 15 minutes, but they give you access to 3 million viewers. Today, we have social media influencers. They have millions of followers online. And you are struggling in your business. And they say, don't worry. Give me 200,000. I will help you promote your business. They say, ah, 200,000. For what? For what? For what? But there are people in this country now, if they just go to their social media platform and mention your name, go to their social media platform and say, oh, I use this product, it's very good, support my friend, you'll be busy till next year. That's how powerful platforms are. So identify platforms that can help you as a leverage and maximize all those platforms. A lot of people, you work in companies that you did not start. That's somebody else's platform. You are working. Somebody created a company, started a company, and employed you, and is paying you salary. Without that platform, will you have a job? No. Somebody has built a house and allowed you to come and rent his house, and yet you are arrogant. There are people with money that don't have a house in Lagos. When agents is true with you in Lagos, you will know that to see correct house and have correct landlord, you honor your landlord. When agents is true with you in Lagos, <laughs> I have uh, one of my new mentees that just came back into the country and is trying to get a house. And he came to see me a few weeks ago. And went, I said, he said, sir, you have no idea. I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I have no idea. I've not been a tenant for almost 14 years, so I don't know what you're talking about. See, these agents, they take you to useless houses. He said, the picture you see is different from what you see on ground, sir. When I get there, the picture is different. They show you a beautiful picture, and they take you to an ugly house. And then they call it money. And I say, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's not my reality. Hello? It's not my reality. So, a lot of people work in companies that they did not start, and yet you are arrogant until they sack you. I used to have one funny stuff like that. This guy, he will be telling customer our product is expensive. No, true life story. So I don't know, you know, he's a pastor, but I don't understand. We know how much, he told us how much we bought, but now he's telling us to sell it at this price because he is a salary and he doesn't understand overhead costs. No matter how much you try to explain, a salary and is a salary and he doesn't understand. 
So he would just be doing that. He would be misbehaving, misbehaving. One day I called him and I sat him down. I said, sit down. I said, I know what you are doing. I said, but the reason why I left you is because part of my leadership style is mentorship. You will grow because you can't spoil what God wants to do, but you will grow. One day you will learn. After all the explanation I've given to you, after showing you all the things, you still think that something is no problem. I said, but let me tell you something. I have come to realize that every salary earner has between four to seven people that are depending on them. I said, if you are foolish, think of your wife. If you are foolish, you have the child. I said, think of your child. I said, because when you lose this job now, you are the one behaving foolishly, but the people that will suffer will be more than you. They will be more than you. One day, he called me. Sir, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, fat. Ah, our product is very cheap, oh. Ah, very cheap, oh. I said, what did you see? Why are you coming up? He said, ah. Why? Because people don't understand. Because me, I tell you the story up front. As you are buying this land, though, the land is 500. But documents, it's another 500, oh. Developmental levy is 1 million, oh. That's 2 million, oh. So people will not buy. It's, ah, your own is too expensive. But they will go to somebody that will tell them 200,000. No, 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 no. Pay five times. When they now finish paying, they have entered. <laughs> they now give them the next chapter. So the wife is part of a cooperative. So why he was saying our land was expensive was because the wife's office, they got a land in the same road where our land is. Our land was 500, their own 200. And me, I told, so the wife now paid the 200, 13,000 for like two years. So all the while, where he was called, he didn't know that. So when they now finished paying 200, they now unveiled the manifesto. Almost 4 million. <laughs> ah, he's now calling me, oh, our one is cheap. Oh. I said, well, I don't owe you any other explanation than the truth that I've told you. Number eight, other people's money. Other people's money. Other people's money. It's amazing how people will labor, labor, labor and carry their money to bank. Without interest. Why? Because the bank has a license that gives them the credibility to convince you to put your money there and go and sleep. But when the brother comes to you and says, My brother, can you invest in my business? Give me 500,000 and I'll be giving you 100,000 every year. What is the guarantee? What is the security? How am I sure? What's the guarantee of your money in the bank? What's the security of your money in the bank? Hello? No, think of it. Think of it. So, other people's money, what does it mean? There are people that have money, but they don't have an idea. There are people that have money, but they don't have time to use the money. So, what do you do? Take advantage of their money by bringing them into your platform. You don't necessarily need everybody to partner with you. They can just be an investor in your business. And by investing in what you do, you share the benefits with them. So if you are not afraid to share the benefits with others, there is money available for you in the hands of people. And that's why those that defraud people know that if we can just show them a benefit, they will bring out the money. Because money is in people. So, many people don't understand that. We had three days conference in Asaba. We just came back yesterday. And one of the myths that we had to deal with for the pastors in the morning is the concept of oh no man nothing. How that many pastors were raised and they were told not to borrow money to do ministry. Don't owe anybody. 
And then they didn't understand the concept of good debts. So I told them, I said, there are three kinds of debt. Though. There's good debt, there's bad debt, there's no debt. I said, so no debt is good, though. It's good not to owe anybody at all. It's good. Bad debt is bad, though. It's a bondage. And that's why you collect money to buy liability. Money to eat, money to buy clothes, money to do name ceremony, money to do wedding, money to do burial. I say, but good debt is an advantage. It's a leverage. The richest man in Africa is a Nigerian and he's owing billions of dollars. Not million, no, billions. And he's the richest man. How can you be the richest man and you are owing billions? Because what he's doing with the money is a leverage that will take care of everything. And so when you don't understand, so I was telling them, I said, look, the problem I have is that many ministers will present themselves to you as if they don't have any debt, they are not doing anything, everything is just God, it's just God, it's just God. I said, but all you need to do is to do your financials. I said, because think up, if your income every month is one million and you are able to save two, 200 every month, that means in one year you will save how much? 2.4 million. Your church now needs generator of 5 million to help your ministry now to move to the next level. What is wrong in collecting loan to buy the generator and be paying the same 2200 you are already saving? Instead of waiting for the 2200 to become 5 million in 3 years, why not have the generator now and pay a little to enhance this position? Why not think of, just do your financials because debt is terrible if you don't understand the financials. Can get it to, because what you are supposed to buy for five million, by the time you go and use debt to buy it, you may end up paying eight million for five million dollar loan. I so, so we looked at a lot of all that. So other people's money, you put your money in the bank, they use your money. Hello. So all our money in the bank is what the bank is using. So they collect it from you and give you three percent interest, and they carry your money and borrow somebody on the other side and collect your three percent interest with your money. So lack of personal funds should never be a limitation to your dream if you know how to leverage other people's money. It is better to have 10% of 1 billion than to have 100% of 10,000. It is better to have 10% of 1 billion than to have 100% of 10,000. So when you are ready to share, it's better because many of you now that are tenants, you could have become landlord if you understand the power of other people's money. Okay, so there is a duplex in Lekki, and they say the duplex is 35 million. And all you have is 1 million. Why not look for 34 people to join you at 1, 1 million? And we buy the duplex, and it is our duplex. And you are a part owner of the duplex. Hello? It's called crowdfunding. Now, if you decide to wait to get at 5 million, by the time you get at 5 million, the duplex will be 110 million. But when you buy into it now, you are a part owner. It's like a cake with your own small portion. So, if the rent from that duplex every year is 3 million, we share the 3 million into 35 places. So every year, even if it's 30,000 that reach your pocket, you know that your 1 million is giving you 30,000 every year, but at the same time, your equity of 1 million in that house is increasing. One day, the house will become 100 million. Your 1 million in 35 places has become, are you getting the mathematics? That's how people become rich. Oh. Don't think that people have so much money. It's because they understand all these things. And as they do that, so you join 35 people to buy one house today, after a while, they said there's one in uh, Idimu that is five million. You gather money, you join two people. Three of you own the five. Before you know it, after 10 years of doing that, you'll be able to have money. you have all kinds of things. Ah, but we are in the same office. Eh, but we are in the same company. Eh, how is he getting money? He's getting wisdom. Number nine, other people's time. Other people's time.
There are people that have time in their hands. If you don't have a job now, you have time in your hands now. So somebody can pay for your time. So every one of you that are working now, somebody is paying for your time. Hello? If you understand the power of time, I told someone yesterday, I said, I can give you one million naira and replace it. But if I give you one hour, it's gone forever. So my time is more important than money. So when you waste my time, I consider it to be a high level of dishonor. I cut you off. I don't have emotion and sentiment on those things. I don't. But if you waste my money, I will have mercy on you because you don't waste money, you pay school fees. God only decides that it is my money you will use to learn. <laughs> Hello? No, think of it. But if you take my time, time is life. Time is money. That's why many of you are working because somebody is able to negotiate your time for money. And then you leave your wife and children and wake up 4 a.m. Why? Somebody is calling for your time. He's paying you for eight hours, so, but you have to spend like 15 hours to get that eight hours payment. So you wake up by 4 a.m., go through all the traffic so that you can be there before nine because the person that is paying for nine to five does not care how long it takes you to get there for nine. And many of you, you are wasting your time on a lot of irrelevant things that you can pay other people for. Because it's cheaper to pay some people than for you to do it by yourself. So instead of trying to do it by yourself, look for people with cheap time on their hands. Buy their time. Hello? What is the highest that a driver will collect in Nigeria? Let's say you be professional driver, 120,000. Say so you be correct, international driver, 120,000 a month. But how much is the salary of most drivers? Minimum wage. So you are an executive. Your salary is 850. Yet you are driving yourself all over Lagos. Because you don't have the simple common sense to just get a driver and give him 50,000 for your peace of mind. But I go drive myself. And then you spend three hours and you are dying instrumentally in traffic. Just because you don't understand that you can buy somebody's time for 50000 and you can sleep inside the car, you can read Bible, you can go online, you can do your online courses, you can achieve so much. Finally, because of time, other people's energy. Other people's energy. There are a lot of people with so much energy. They have energy to burn. Just like people have time. People also have energy to burn. So look all around. Instead of you having to wash the clothes by yourself, there are people called washerman and dry cleaner. They have energy to burn. That time they are going to spend Washing and washing and washing and washing. Somebody else can do the washing and washing and washing and washing. You are a landlord. You have a three, four, five bedroom duplex. Are you going to sweep the whole compound? Are you going to be cutting the grass in the whole compound? I will do it by myself. DIY, 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 DIY. There are people you will pay 3,000. 3,000. They will wake up by six years on my ballet learning. They will be sweeping with joy. 3,000. <laughs> they have energy, but it's cheap energy. They have time. It's cheap time. They will come and sweep the whole compound. They will be singing as they are sweeping. Oh, this year, oh, Baba, this year, oh. Instead of you having to do that all in the name of I will do it myself. So we can go on and on and on, but I promise you 10. Other people's anointing, other people's so many things. Every head bowed in Jesus' name.